Hi, Jim McGregor from Curious Research here for another Curious Cast. I'm joined by Mike Clark, who is a fellow at a senior fellow. I don't even know. Corporate what, fellow. Corporate fellow that, that at AMB. I'm an engineer. He's basically <laughs> the Zen god. So he is one of the, probably the most important person for the turnaround at AMB and responsible for the architecture that really changed everything in terms of how we think about processors. <laughs> so you kind of, you know, really, when I was working with AMD, you know, before Zen came along and they started from scratch and you guys built up a brand new architecture and you keep enhancing it and developing it. So you want to talk a little bit how important Zen, the Zen architecture is? Not the just A&B, but the, yeah, but, but the industry. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, um, you know, Zen was uh, obviously a foundational moment for us. You know, we really, you know, we are kind of stuck in the incrementalism of our bulldozer generation. Mm -hmm. And the demands, you know, saying we needed a new core out every year, but we weren't really set to be able to make the fundamental change we did. So we ended up coming up finally with a plan where we could kind of merge our teams together and really focus on the Zen architecture and stay alive till we could get it out uh, into the world. And yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, everyone, uh, you know, some people left, they didn't think we could do it. It was very risky. You know, grounds up core, uh, a lot of change. We were doing SMT and Optash for the first time and a single generation. People are like, there's no way you can do both those changes at the same time. So, well, we need to. So guys, let's figure it out. I mean, that's that's a beauty of engineers. It's just, you know, giving them, you got to give them, you know, aspirational goals, but you, you can't go too far that it's so ridiculous. They can see that they're going to fail. But, you, but if you push them, they will deliver they you know at the end they love what they're doing so you just gotta feed that love and drop and get the team going all going in the right direction so i remember how risky it was <laughs> when you guys announced it was going to be a chiplet architecture all right and it's like okay wait a minute they're going away from monolithic dyes what are they thinking all right. but that was huge and everyone followed yeah so no, I mean, it was a fundamental moment i like to think you know i was thinking back on the stage you know uh you know seven years five generations in the headwind of everyone saying Moore's law is dead and you get no, you know, you get no new transistors or they cost more. So you're not making headroom. And what we've been able to do, like you said, of driving double digit IPC in each generation, coming up with unique things like chiplets so we could mitigate the pain of Moore's law slowing down. It's not dead. We never believed it was dead, but, and yeah, that the, it just, you know, the, it drives the innovation. You know, when people, I would say kind of look at a static world and they, they undersell that it's not going to stay the same. We're innovative. We're going to figure a way around problems and continue to deliver the performance that the, the world craves, right? And you've taken it all the way from leading edge servers <laughs> all the way down to mobile devices now. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive. And I mean, I, I got to be honest, <laughs> my, my favorite is still Threadripper. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Threadripper is a great story of, you know, I would say, you know, <laughs> nobody, the, you know, no one could come up with a business plan where it made sense. But <laughs> a small core team of people, and not necessarily me, really. I mean, I was champion Threadripper, but not, you know, it's more of a the platform productizing. People thought no one would buy it. You know, we're going to not make any money type thing and no a small group of people really pushed it said i think this is going to be great the world's going to love it and they did oh and I they were right it. i love it yeah uh, it's, and it's then awesome. the, the bu said oh yeah this is great well yeah let's go do this the biggest baddest processor you can for a workstation slash yeah you don't know how many people i talk to are like i have a thread ripper on my desk i'm so sick of submitting jobs into my uh -huh. lsfq i can i can just do it and i get results immediately you know it's you can't imagine the return on investment of me putting a thread ripper on my i'd buy it myself you know oh, it's my test platform for <laughs> yeah. all the G new gpus we it's get just, in it's like they all go through the there thread you go. Ripper system. I mean, so you know, we're here now and the first introduction of Zen 5. So we're now at Zen 5. So let's talk a little bit about that. How okay. important and what are the biggest changes for the Zen 5 architecture? So Zen 5 is huge because I like to say, you know, from that original Zen to Zen 4, we were sort of a six wide instruction dispatch, four ALUs, 
we really built on that from efficiency to get the most out of that interface but we knew we that was going to run out of steam right and so the zen 5 we set out we knew we needed to create a new foundation similar to the original zen that we can build on for the future and so sort of at the core of that is now instead of six instruction dispatch we're eight wide instead of four alus we have six alus and then to feed that thing we needed uh, a new front end to be able to deliver way more instructions to that and just so much innovation and technology and, and, and creating that new front end and then on the back end now that we had the core so big it's like hey we should do avx 512 the full data path because it's actually kind of balanced now we have an integer side of the machine that's <laughs> drawing a lot of uh, you know compute and it, it sort of it's not the same but it's you know it matches now it's more balanced and if we if we didn't try to do avx 512 like on zen 2 it'd be way out of balance right we didn't have the kind of guts in the rest of the machine to really afford that kind of uh, vector unit so so we redid that we doubled the bandwidth out of the l1 to mm -hmm. the floating point unit we doubled the bandwidth from the l2 to the l1 to your point about the range of products, even though we created the AVX 512, we have a way to build it back like the Zen 4 style 256. So in those markets that can't use it as much, we can still give them a good area efficient performance with the AVX 512, but they can they can fit better into where their workloads and products they need to deploy. So uh, we've always kind of come about it from the beginning of we need to have modularity so we can deliver products to these different markets and we don't have to go create a separate micro architecture both where you know sort of our competitors are at and where we used to be before Zen where we had two lines yeah. of, and we learned from that that we don't really need that we can we just need to have flexibility in our design process to stretch the one core you know one core IPC at its level everybody really wants that and just sort of around you know the edges the L everyone doesn't need the big l3 everyone doesn't need the big floating point and we can we can modulate that so you don't need it or you don't want to do that well, again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we want to continue we even now we have you know two technologies we're coming out in yeah you know we used to do it you do one then later you port to it no we're coming out in four nanometer and three nanometer essentially together one you know thing designed in two and you know, part of that's our success that we have the you know that that's a lot on our design teams to yeah. be, but we've had the success to grow the teams to be able to do that but it's sort of also in our dna of flexibility and being able to again provide the right technology into those different markets for cost as we, to uh, drive the different product requirements so one architecture <laughs> right. multiple different cores uh, multiple processes yeah. and chiplets so you can re-architect this around exactly. whatever you want. Now the first product, <laughs> and the best example of that is the first product, yeah. which typically I would have expected to be server, but no, it's going to be uh, mobile, especially targeting, you know, these new AI PCs with strict points. Yeah, strict, strict point. I gotta get that right one of these days. <laughs> um, but no, targeting that. So you're targeting anything from a 15 to 45 watt TDP. Um, and combining it with a brand new NPU and a brand new, or I should say, a modified GPU. Okay. So, and still getting into that range. So, you know, what should we, you know, obviously we've seen the new technologies for the other AI PCs out there. How competitive do you think uh, Strix Point's going to be uh, in the market for AI PCs? I, you know, I'm, I'm obviously optimi overly optimistic as a architect. That's kind of in my nature. But yes, I think it's going to be huge. I mean, one point we didn't talk about in the flexibility also that's in Strix Point is that, you know, we had, we introduced on Zen 4 the compact core mm -hmm. where we reduce the max frequency target because we're going to find ourselves, for, we're going for throughput, but we still. Again, it's that same core, same IPC level, yeah. same ISA. Well, now we're bringing that to mobile in Strix Point, where we have two what we call core complexes. One, kind of a traditional high performance. It has four cores, but it has 16 meg L3. So it has four meg L3 per core. And then we bring in a second core complex, which is in the compact technology for throughput, where we have eight cores, but we only have eight meg L3. And we have it tuned to that lower frequency so as it comes on but still that same ipc so it makes it really easy 
for software to schedule work across those. They don't have to worry about different bottlenecks from different microarchitectures. So really the only delta is, um, you know, the L3 cache and the frequency. And so, yeah, it's just another element to the um, flexibility in our design and delivering it in strict point has been huge. And I think, you know, as you said, we don't traditionally launch with mobile. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, I think because of the flexibility and the capability of what we could bring, that's why it's coming out so early is to show that confidence. And I know we like to talk about silicon because I'm a silicon guy, and you're a silicon <laughs> so, guy, yeah. but there's more than that. There's yeah. also a unified software stack that yeah. goes along with this too. So Yeah, and as you know, AI has been evolving really fast, and um, we do have ours. Either you can say it's really complicated or it's, you know, optimized in ways for, to deliver the best solution. We can do AI on the CPU. Never going to be the best tops for watt. That's not what we're, we're trying to do. We're trying to just be, you know, a good AI. We do, do good data prep. If you find yourself with, you know, a small inference job that's not worth launching somewhere else, you can do it on the CPU, and we want to give you that good feel. But then we have the MPU where you can get the most tops per watt, and it's dedicated to that, and that's what we want. And we have our GPU where we can do AI as well. And the CPU can launch work in there and it's efficient at launching it. And so we we do, you know, we're obviously, you're going to see later, as you mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. some unifying the software view of that is going to be key to really getting at the potential. But it's, it's going to be, it's going to be huge. Yeah. And then we also, I know there's some uh, laptop uh, mock-ups here, but we also have Granite Rapids. So we're going to have a desktop version <laughs> yeah. coming out pretty soon too by the end of this year. So, no, this is great. I just want to say that we look forward to reviewing <laughs> these systems. So, uh, congratulations well, great. I, again. We look forward to delivering them to you. I, I, I mean, I said it today, but I'll say it again that, you know, we, as you mentioned, we do, we work so long on these things that, to finally get it into your hands mm -hmm. and let you guys showcase it and, and use it and use it in ways that even we never dreamed of. It's, it's so fulfilling to pay off for all those years of hard work and we love it so it's but to see that it actually make it into a product is is awesome uh so. you know i can remember a time when people were wondering if amd was going to be in business and now see amd as the technology leader in the industry yeah. um and we're yeah. not stopping i mean we that is that is a remarkable it's in our dna to keep pushing it doesn't matter we love the com and we love the competition we mm -hmm. want competition because that helps push us but we're going to push ourselves too we're not slowing down so. all right well mike thank you very much right. thank really you. appreciate it all right